Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very very exponential equation. While z is a complex number and we have e to the power z plus zi and that is equal to i and we're going to be solving for z values. All right, let's see how we can proceed with this. So we have an exponential equation but z is a complex number. So one of the things I could probably do is replace z with something, don't you think? Since z is a complex number and this channel is called what? a plus bi. Let's go ahead and replace z with a plus bi. And then we get something like this. e to the power a plus bi plus a plus bi all multiplied by i and that's equal to i. Interesting. Now we can go ahead and distribute, that gives us AI, which is kind of like artificial intelligence, right? But not. And plus BI squared, which is minus B because I squared is negative 1. So A minus B is going to be the real part. And the imaginary part is just going to be BI plus AI, or I can just write it as A plus B multiplied by I. And then that should equal I. Now I have an exponential on the left hand side. I don't have an exponential on the right hand side. Can I turn i to an exponential? Sure, absolutely you can do that. If you consider the argon diagram, on the argon diagram, i will be represented by 0 plus i or 0 comma 1. Right here, a point on the imaginary axis because this is real, that's imaginary, one unit away from 0, that's our i. And obviously, the angle that this vector makes with the real axis, with the positive real axis, is pi over 2 radians plus a 2 pi, another 2 pi, so on and so forth. In other words, we're allowed to add multiples of 2 pi to this. That's going to be the period. Okay? So what does that mean? It just means I can be written as, by the way, if you know r and theta, for a complex number, you can basically write it as r times e to the i theta. And in this case, r is 1, so we can write it as e to the power i times pi over 2. But again, pi over 2 is just the principal value. You can also just write this as i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi n, where n is an integer. By the way, these are equal because they're both equal to i. Make sense? Okay. Cool, cool. Now. What am I going to do with this? Well, we can kind of set these two things equal to each other. e to the a minus b plus a plus b i equals e to the power i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. If you want a simple solution, replace n with 0, then you'll get something simpler. But wait a minute. On the right-hand side, I have e to the power i times something. So it's kind of like imaginary. No real part, right? You see that? On the left hand side, the same thing should happen. So I should not have a real part. And obviously, when you separate this number, you can definitely do that, right? Whenever you have e to the x plus yi, you can write it as e to the x times e to the yi. And this is going to be the modulus. In this case, the modulus is e to the a minus b, because this can be written as e to the power i times a plus b. And when you set this equal to that, what happens? This must be 0, which means a equals b is going to be uh, required, right? Okay, well, replacing z with a plus bi, I don't think that's a very good idea, even though this will get you the solutions. And obviously, let me just tell you quick, real quick what's going to happen from here, as far as I know. a minus b is 0, which means b is equal to a. And then a plus b is going to be set equal to this. And normally this would be a system, but it's easy. So if you replace b with a, you're going to get 2a equals pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. And then from here a becomes pi over 4 plus pi n. That's my a, and I do need my b, but b is the same thing. So if you kind of put it together, you can write the z. We're also going to be looking at the result from Wolfram Alpha and we'll compare our answer to that of Wolfram Alpha, okay? But anyways, let's just do this without using A plus BI, okay? 
So we're just going to directly solve this. How? Well, first of all, notice that we can factor out the z. Is that going to help? I think so. Let's go ahead and separate those. And then write this as e to the power i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. Awesome. Now, here's what we're going to do next. We're going to set the exponents equal to each other because we considered adding multiples of 2 pi, so we're all good. This gives us, after natural logging both sides, z times 1 plus i equals i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. And then again, you don't need to replace z with anything. Just divide by 1 plus i and you should be good. Make sense? So divide by 1 plus i, divide by 1 plus i. 1 plus i is not 0. It cancels out, leaving us with z. i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi n divided by 1 plus i. And then we will use the conjugates. Let's use them. 1 minus i, 1 minus i. And in the numerator, we're going to get something like this. First of all, this is something times pi. So you can kind of think of it as ki. So when you multiply by 1 minus i, first you're going to multiply that by 1, which is going to give you the same thing, right? And then minus i times i is i squared, but that's a minus i squared, which is a positive 1. So you can totally ignore that and just add pi over 2 plus 2 pi n, right? With the stuff inside the parentheses. All over 1 squared plus 1 squared, which is 2. And then you can go ahead and divide everything by 2, and you should get the answer from here. Isn't that interesting? Now, when you do, let's take this first because that's the real part. Z is going to be pi over 4 plus pi n plus pi over 4 plus pi n all multiplied by i. Notice that I divided everything inside the parentheses by 2, so I didn't have to write 1 half, and that should be the answer. Make sense? So we kind of have like an interesting complex number whose real parts and imaginary parts are always equal, just like with 1 plus i. Why? Because that's the only thing that's going to work. But let's go ahead and check the results from Wolfram Alpha, and we'll finish with that. Okay? Ready? Let's go ahead and take a look. So Wolfram Alpha says for this problem, the same thing, right? But it, they just express a little differently. Notice that 1 plus i, they have the same denominator, so we can kind of factor out 1 fourth, and then distribute over this, that 4 is going to cancel out, so on and so forth. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.